And the fact is, every day, we're all moving in the direction of a character of one sort or another. And it's hard to realize the significance, the importance, the drama of this, because we just get so caught up in the circumstances of our lives. Something remarkable is going to happen today. You are going to change. Maybe a little bit, maybe quite a lot. Maybe for better, hopefully, maybe not. Maybe by accident, maybe on purpose. By the time your head hits the pillow tonight, I promise you, you will be different. You will be one day's worth of different. You will have changed from today. And beyond that, by the way, when you string all the days of your life together, what you end up with is a character, is the formation of a soul. And that is what matters most, and that's what you and I have to offer to God and to other people. And by the way, we don't work on that on our own. And by the way, you will never get this day again. I was made dramatically aware of how change is inevitable in our lives quite recently. I was with nine friends together. We all went to college together many, many decades ago. We used to have summit breakfast periodically over the years. And this first one we'd had in more than a decade with the nine of us who were there. Because we went to school together, it's easy for us to think, yeah, we're still pretty much the guys that we were when we went to college or uh, in the early years after that. But actually, we changed quite dramatically. One of the ways we knew this was the hostess of the restaurant, I'm not making this up, came up and three of us had ordered oatmeal. And she said, I am so sorry. We're out of oatmeal, but we do have other offerings that older gentlemen might enjoy. I am not making that up. That is a verbatim quote. Other offerings for older gentlemen. What the heck is that? Like a bowl of Metamucil? Do you have some of that soft food so we don't need tea for it? And when she said those words, we looked at each other with different eyes. We have changed quite a lot. It would be fascinating, wouldn't it, if the changes that take place on the inside of us in our character were as visible, were as clear as the changes that take place outside of us. Those are the ones that we notice and we will often praise you look good or comment on when somebody else is gone. But that's temporal and finite does not really matter. We were gathered together. We're uh, a group because there was a teacher once named Jerry Hawthorne. He died quite a long time ago. He had a good mind, but there were other teachers that had terrific minds. He had a kind of a woundedness that made him vulnerable, but lots of people are wounded. He had a sense of humor that was quite delightful. He would jab you with the elbow if you didn't laugh at his jokes. But there's a, but he wove them all together with a kind of character, a kind of inner goodness that inspired us and challenged us and made us love him dearly and made us want not so much to be like him, but to be the person that he saw when he looked at us. And the fact is, every day, we're all moving in the direction of a character of one sort or another. And it's hard to realize the significance, the importance, the drama of this, because we just get so caught up in the circumstances of our lives. So as we begin this journey together towards what matters most, the person that you're becoming, I want to read from C.S. Lewis. This is his book, Mere Christianity. Here's how he describes this process. Uh, one of the problems when we think about character, virtue, what we're going to be talking about today, we just think of it as an external exercise in following rules. Lewis says, people often think of Christian morality as a kind of bargain in which God says, if you keep a lot of rules, I'll reward you. And if you don't, I'll do the other thing. Lewis says, I don't think that's the best way of looking at it. I would much rather say, every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses into something a little different from what it was before. That's happening right now and right now and right now. And taking your life as a whole with all your innumerable choices all your life long, you are slowly turning this central thing either into a heavenly creature or into a hellish creature. 
either into a creature that is in harmony with God and other creatures in itself, or into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and its fellow creatures and with itself. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. That is, joy and peace and knowledge and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, impotence, and eternal loneliness. Each of us at Each moment, each of us at each moment is progressing to the one state or the other. Now, that can sound quite overwhelming to us. We wonder, well, how do we make progress in this? And the danger is that we, when we talk about character or um, acquiring virtue, it just becomes this kind of external do it yourself. Look at how good I'm becoming project. If you've ever read The Once and Future King about King Arthur, Lancelot is this character where he is almost obsessed with, look how righteous I am becoming. And it actually makes him self-righteous and self-absorbed and a less good character, somebody that nobody wants to be around. So Lewis talks about this as well. How do we pursue this? He says, often we think, well, God wants me to keep some rules, so I guess I have to try to keep those rules, but then I hope I get to satisfy my natural desires. And he says, uh, no, make no mistake. If you're really going to try to meet all the demands made on the natural self, it will not have enough left over to live on. The more you obey your conscience, the more it will demand of you. And your natural self, which is thus being starved and hampered and worried at every turn, will get angrier and angrier. In the end, you will either give up trying to be good or else become one of those people who, as they say, live for others, but is always in a discontented, grumbling way, always wondering why the others do not notice it more and always making a martyr of yourself. And once you become that, you will be a far greater pest to anyone who has to live with you than you would be if you had remained frankly selfish. My friend Kent was telling me today, there's a song, I've never heard this expression before. One of the lines in it was, come down off the cross, we need the wood. It's like if you just are making a martyr of yourself, if you think you are being like Jesus and making this enormous sacrifice, you're just going to make other people. You'll turn into the elder brother in that story Jesus told, and you will not do anybody any good. The only way to go about doing this is actually to die to that old natural self. This is not a do-it-yourself project to try to become a better person. Benjamin Franklin wrote one time about trying to acquire one at a time. I think it was 16 or 17 different character virtues. We're going to talk about different virtues, but this is not about how do I work harder and harder. I can't. He can. I think I'll let him. This is really about discovering the reality of the kingdom of God and beginning to experience it, starting with my body, my aging, decaying, oatmeal-eating, older gentleman body, and yours, whatever you eat and whatever age it is, inside that body, something's going on. And the eternal invitation is offered to us once more. Jesus put it like this. This is such a fascinating statement. Seek first the kingdom of God. This is Matthew 6, 33. Don't run after the idols. What do I look like? What do I wear? What will I eat? How much food? How much wealth? How much success? None of those are worth giving your one and only life to. They will actually ultimately corrode your soul, as we'll see as we go through this journey. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, Uh, When he names those two items, seek the kingdom of God in his righteousness, they go together. They're like salt and pepper at the table. You know, you're never supposed to pass the salt without passing the pepper, so everybody knows how to find them both. You cannot look for the kingdom of God without also looking for his righteousness, because righteousness has to do with that kind of character that enables me to live in God's kingdom. Righteousness, if we understand it rightly, it's that old word, that describes what it is that makes somebody good from the inside, like Dr. Hawthorne, who we love so dearly. Um, Righteousness is what I begin to experience when I live in the kingdom of God, love and joy. So today, so today, as we begin this journey um, towards the discovery of the kind of character that God created for you to live into, look for the kingdom of God 
Every time you think about it, don't let it be a burden. It's not an obligation. It's not a list of rules. Come down off the cross. We need the wood. Okay, it's not showing everybody what a deeply religious, spiritual person you are. It's not that kind of thing. Just, uh, it's the grandest invitation anybody will ever have. Look for it in this moment right now. God, where are, what are you saying to me right now? God, how can I speak in this moment? God, how can I listen in this moment? How can I be with friends sitting around a table remembering a wonderful teacher years ago and be filled with gratitude and filled with joy and filled with lightness of spirit and god how can you release me from regret over all the bad choices i've made since then and god how can you release me from fear about the ways in which my body or uh, my circumstances are decaying how can you help me find the kingdom right here and then i breathe in love and how can i offer that joy. How can I radiate that? Peace. How can I extend that? And this is not something that we do on our own. This is what we discover so that it begins to well up and bubble up inside you like springs of living water coming out of your belly. Seek first today from one moment to the next, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So that central part of you that changes every time you choose or that you do not choose can be growing into a heavenly thing. I can't, he can. I think I'll let him. Let the change today be really good. Get after it. Hey, I'm Tim. Thanks for joining us. Before you leave, you can subscribe to this channel or like this video or comment on the video. We love to read those comments. We read them every day, so we'd love to hear from you there. If you'd like to receive the emails that go along with each video, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash subscribe. Or if you have a prayer request, we would love to pray for you. You can text that request to 855-888-0444. See you next time.